What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about the same thing we talk about every week. How to debunk keto. So this comes up because there was a new meta-analysis that was published recently that examined people who did keto but also resistance trained. The vast majority of studies out there looking at the ketogenic diet are typically in obese people who don't exercise or doing aerobic exercise. And previously we had videos that discussed a few individual studies that seemed to suggest that keto might be suboptimal for improving muscle mass. But now we actually have a meta-analysis on this topic. And it looked at, I think, around a dozen studies with 244 total participants. And what they found was that of these people who were doing the ketogenic diet and resistance training, and the good news is they did lose weight. On average, people in these studies lost around three and a half kilos of weight. So that's the good news. Now, the bad news is a good chunk of this was actually from lean body mass. On average, the people in these studies lost around 1.4 kilograms of lean body mass, even while resistance training, which is a little bit unique because there's quite a few studies out there to show that if you resistance train while you're dieting and you don't diet to a super lean body fat level, like say contest prep, that you should maintain most of your lean body mass. And so what could be some of the reasons why this happened. Well, there could be a few different things. So let's go with the practical reason first. They didn't control calories in this study. So what is extremely possible is that we do know that a ketogenic diet tends to be more satiating than like a standard Western American diet right? People on a ketogenic diet may have felt more full and simply consumed less calories than the group that was not doing a ketogenic diet. Now that being said, it still doesn't really answer the question of why they lost lean body mass, even though they were still resistance training. Now, a few possible explanations for that. The first being, it's possible that quite a bit of it was body water. We do know the ketogenic diet increases body water loss, especially during that first initial week. In fact, in long-term meta-analysis, showing that ketogenic diets outperform non-ketogenic diets in humans, uh, typically what we see is it's like only at like three to six months and only by about a kilo. Oh, by the way, turns out this could just be completely lean body mass difference and not actual fat mass difference. And a large part of that could be coming from water. When you're on a ketogenic diet, you have a reduction in glycogen due to the low carbohydrate content of the diet. Glycogen stores water with it inside of muscle tissue, and that shows up as lean body mass. So that's one thing. Uh, it's harder to know if they're actually losing like contractile tissue. Now there is a study that did show that people on a ketogenic diet did not get the same amount of strength gains as those that were on a non-ketogenic diet during a resistance training program. So it's possible that they are building less muscle tissue, and that could be from a few different reasons. Now, the first one might be that hey, if they're trying to do like a typical like bodybuilding style program, that involves the anaerobic system, especially if you're training close to failure. And you are not going to get maximal performance without carbohydrate. I'm not saying you can't gain muscle on a ketogenic diet. I'm not saying you can't get stronger on a ketogenic diet. But based on the studies we have, it appears like you're not going to get as optimally strong or as optimally muscular while on a ketogenic diet. Now, again, that could be because you're not able to create as much progressive overload due to not having as good of performance in the gym. It's also possible that it's a protein balance issue. Now we know that protein balance is the rate of protein synthesis minus the rate of protein degradation. So, if we want to increase our accretion of lean tissue, we can either do that by increasing muscle protein synthesis or decreasing muscle protein breakdown or both. Now, we do know that carbohydrates have actually been shown to inhibit muscle protein breakdown, probably due to the effects of insulin on the proteasome. It's a proteasome inhibitor and the proteasome is one of the pathways through which proteins are degraded. So even though carbohydrates aren't really anabolic and don't really affect muscle protein synthesis, they do appear to attenuate muscle protein degradation and that could possibly 
lead to more muscle mass accretion over time. We also know from some of Kevin Hall's studies at NIH that during the first few initial weeks of a ketogenic diet, there is an increased loss of nitrogen from the body. So protein is unique in that protein, which contains amino acids, they have a nitrogen component to them. Carbohydrates don't have nitrogen, fats don't have nitrogen. And most of the nitrogen is stored in the lean tissues of the body. Therefore, if you're having an increased loss of nitrogen and in a net negative nitrogen balance, it's likely that you are losing lean tissue. In fact, most of the protein recommendations that have been formed throughout the years were originally based on nitrogen balance studies, meaning you feed protein until you are getting more nitrogen retained versus loss, and then you can presume that you're in a net positive nitrogen balance. So if we're having a net negative nitrogen balance from a ketogenic diet, that could also be problematic. So there's a few different mechanisms here, but I wanna be really clear. I, once again, am not saying that you can't gain muscle on a ketogenic diet, you certainly can. And I am not saying that you can't get stronger on a ketogenic diet, you certainly can. However, if your goal is to be as big and strong as you possibly can, then it appears that the ketogenic diet might be a suboptimal nutritional approach for that particular subset of people. Now, if you're somebody who says, hey, I just want to get like a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger, but my biggest thing is I find that this diet's very easy to stick to, I want to lose some body fat, no worries, you can do it, just understand what the drawbacks are of it. All right, guys, if you want to check out the study, the link is in the description, as well as links to my educational books, our coaching app, and the workout builder. Make sure you check those out. Great value for what you get. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next week.